Hey everybody, it's Chris from Lincoln Airsoft, and for today's video, we are going over Airsoft 101. These are a few of the absolute basics for Airsoft that all new players and returning players need to know when getting into the game or returning to the game after a long hiatus. This is all basic equipment, terms, and some rules, and just a lot of stuff that you just really need to know if you want to know Airsoft. First, let's discuss gun types. In Airsoft, there are many different types of guns for you to choose from when building your own personalized loadout. And each gun type requires a different level of maintenance and an understanding of how they work given certain weather conditions, temperatures, and environments. First, let's start off with the AEGs, or Automatic Electric Gun. These work off of batteries and have a lot of different moving parts inside to make the BBs fire. AEGs are somewhat limited on what type of environments and weather conditions they can be used in, and typically you should avoid any temperature under 35 degrees or over 100 degrees and try not to get them wet. AEGs have a lot, like I said, a lot of moving parts. You have a whole bunch of different gears, bushings, motor, the batteries, the gearbox, hop-up system, etc. Instead of there's a lot going on, and it definitely has the most amount of moving parts for the type of guns that you can choose from. So there are a lot of potentials for breakage, but also a lot of potentials for upgrading. You can buy a very standard $150 AEG and turn it into a $400 nail driver if you want to, and if you invest the time and money into it. So there's a lot of customization with them but also a lot can go wrong with AEG. Next we have spring guns and spring guns range from that cheap little pistol or plastic M16 that you can buy at Walmart or Dick's Sporting Goods or a primarily sniper rifles like the $600 Novrich SSG. Spring guns are versatile and can be used in almost any weather, any temperature, and any environment. But they require a skilled hand to use. Sniping is not easy no matter what you see, no matter how many times you watch Silo Entertainment, Swamp Sniper, or Novrich, just get those 300 foot snipes right in the head. You know, it's not that easy. There's a lot of skill and a lot of patience and a lot of timing involved with airsoft sniping. But on the plus side, there are, it has the least amount of moving parts with any gun. It really, just the spring and the bolt is all you honestly have to. To worry about for in internals versus the EEGs which like I said have different gears, bushings, motors, batteries, gearbox, and the hop-up system and so much more going on. So when it comes to simplicity and effectiveness, spring guns rival AEGs in that category. Now we're going to move to the green gas guns which require a lot of upkeep and typically very very expensive. If I'm, You're not going to buy a green gas gun unless you're getting a damn good gun. These guns have to be constantly cleaned and cared for just like a real gun and the gas itself can get expensive if you use it a lot and it gets used up very quickly but they pack a punch and they feel realistic and they are just beautifully made like they are gorgeous to look at gorgeous to hold and just feel like a dream when playing with these guns are usually able to withstand very harsh weather conditions i've seen people submerge their gas blowback fully in water for over two minutes i think evite did something like that where they're testing out the effectiveness in water and the gas blowback still worked after being uh, even being shot underwater but they can be iffy in the cold because it is gas and gas does not do well with cold now finally i know there's a couple of other variants we can go over but the last one we're going to talk about is co2 which is typically reserved for secondaries like handguns and such but are there are some primary variants out there there are some co2 snipers some co2 um assault rifles and co2 shotguns but most of what you're going to see are co2 secondaries CO2 is very easily accessible, it's cheap, it uses 12 gram cartridges that can be bought in almost any sports store and Walmart, and they can be uh, super cheap or very expensive, and they feel very genuine with how the blowbacks kick in your hand and they just have a weight to them, they have a really genuine feel about them. They have semi-limited usability in the cold weather because of their CO2 gas cartridges, but they can be used almost anywhere else, really. You're not going to really have a problem using the gun in high temperatures. Now that we've covered the basics of gun types, so that way you know what somebody is talking about when they refer to an AEG, let's move on to batteries, which only pertains to AEGs. There's a long list of battery types, so I'll try to be quick, but also, I'm really just going over the basics, so I'm sorry if I leave some stuff out. You don't worry. If you need to, if you want to explore more about a particular battery type, 
Um, there are millions of videos on YouTube, exactly millions, that you can find on explaining each battery type in depth and all their chemicals and how they react and their cells and such. This is, again, just a basic skim over so you understand a little bit. First, you have NICAD, which stands for Nickel Cadmium. These were the standard back in the day when Airsoft was first really getting a foothold in America, but to this day have since been replaced because of their tendency to catch fire from overuse, overcharging, or just poor conditions. You won't see too many of these nowadays because they're bulky they were huge batteries and they were sort of adopted for airsoft from rc cars and stuff like that uh, they used a large tamiya type connector which also took a valuable stock space in your gun along with the size of the battery it was just the housing was very tight they were heavy they were bulky it took forever to charge and they were just a danger to you as you're carrying them around and storing them in your house so nike had you won't really see too often except for some very old guns, which I still have a gun that works on NICAD, and I will not put a NICAD in there. Next, we have the NIM type battery, which stands for Nickel Metal Hydride, and this battery is much more stable and a bit smaller, using a small Tamiya connector type, which combined makes it easier to squeeze into your gun stocks. Uh, NIM type batteries became the industry standard, but still has the same risk as really any battery in, the, in that misuse or not following instructions could result in fires. On the plus side, NIM batteries can be drained all the way down to recharge just fine. Uh, back in the day when NIMs were first being produced and they first started uh, cycling them out in airsoft guns, if you use the NIM type battery all the way down to zero charge, it had a sort of like memory chemical reaction. You drained it all the way, you couldn't recharge your battery, you killed your battery, that's how it was. But they have since fixed that and now they can be recharged from basically any amount of charge. If you charge it down to 10%, 40%, 72%, or even 3%, you can charge it back to 100% and it'll work just fine. Or rather, it should work just fine. But one thing you have to note is that they don't work so well in cold temperatures. They drain pretty much twice, two, three times as fast in cold temperatures, and by cold, I mean about less than 30 degrees Fahrenheit. Next, we move on to LiPo versus LiFi batteries. I don't know if it's Life, LiFi, I always pronounce it LiFi, which is lithium polymer versus lithium iron phosphate. And these two batteries are very similar with some slight differences. Basically, LiPo batteries are the ones that you usually upgrade your NIM type from to. You upgrade if you usually you get a NIM type battery to start off your airsoft gun and then you upgrade to a LiPo. And LiPo batteries resist cold much better than NIM types and have a safer, more consistent output. But they take the same amount of volt every single time you pull the trigger, they just they drain consistently. Problem is, like all of the batteries, LiPo batteries can still explode or combust when not treated properly. The problem is, like all other batteries, LiPos can still explode or combust when not treated properly, which we'll go over in a few minutes, but for a quick example, you guys remember when hoverboards were combusting and exploding? You look at your phone, you know how Androids used to explode because of their lithium batteries, that's what it is, you have a lithium battery in your pocket right now or sitting in front of you. LiPo has quickly become the new standard, like I said, because of their superior output, slim, multi cell design and lifey batteries are definitely the safest battery type when it comes to spontaneous combustion or mistreated combustion. Um, and they're extremely similar to LiPos, but they do have a weaker output. They're, they usually don't come in high volts, whereas LiPos can go up to like an 11.1, a 14 point whatever. They can go really high with their voltage output, which by the way will damage your internals if your gun can't handle it. Lifey does not quite meet that voltage standard. Let's talk about what the voltage is on your gun. The voltage of a battery determines the rate at which the power flows out of the battery. An 8.4 volt battery will run a certain motor at a given speed. A 9.6 volt battery will run the same motor but faster. Or if the motor encounters a load that slows it, the 9.6 volt battery will slow down less than the 8.4 volt battery running the same motor. Think of the voltage as the horsepower for the battery. Basically, you want to use higher voltage batteries if you have upgraded your gun, if you give it like a MOSFET, or if you do, um, like if you upgrade your gearbox and such, if you, and you upgrade your high speed motor, if you do some gun upgrades, go to a higher voltage battery, but otherwise stick to what it recommends your voltage for the gun on the site that you bought it from. If it recommends an 8.4, stick with an 8.4. Now, the other, another one of the ratings you have to look at, which is the MA rating, or MAH. The MA rating tells you just how much power the battery holds. It's basically its capacity. So if you have a 1600 Ma, that's considered a, an above average capacity, whereas a 900 or 1000 is a pretty low. And essentially, it roughly translates to one BB per Ma. So essentially, a 3000 Ma type battery 
will give you roughly 3000 BBs fired before the battery is dead, if you wanna look at it very simply. Then you have the C rating, which is what you're gonna see on LiPo and LiFi batteries. The C rating measures just how fast a battery can discharge its energy, so it's essentially um, how quickly it takes that volt from the MA. Essentially, the C rating is gonna affect how fast it's gonna take that voltage from your gun in a constant stream of BBs versus the burst. The burst C rating of a battery is more important to airsoft than its constant C rating because most airsoft guns usually are used for a quick burst or semi-automatic fire. So that C rating is essentially how quickly you can get that those bursts and those semi shots to come out of your battery and how consistent they will be. So usually you're gonna run into a 10, a 15, a 20, a 30, or a 40 C rating. And usually what I do for my guns is I get about a 30 C because I like to do very fast semi-auto shooting. But the higher you go, remember it's gonna be more taxing on your gun and you may be causing a lot of arcing in your trigger contacts, which is gonna cause your internals to wear away. So if you wanna learn more about it, you can. there's a whole lot of research. I'm not gonna get all into it because like I said, this is a basics video and those are the basics. Now, before we finish up with batteries, let's go over some things you should never do with your batteries. First of all, don't use chargers that are not made for your battery. Most guns come with a, st if you get a gun and a battery, you're gonna get a standard wall charger. Chuck that thing, get rid of it, upgrade to a smart charger. They're about 30 US dollars and you use them for NIM type batteries. And some of them could uh, can be used for LiPo's batteries, it all depends, but LiPo's do have their own type of chargers which have different cell charging capabilities. I don't know why I paused on capabilities. Basically, you want to get a LiPo charger that matches the number of cells your battery has. Usually, they have two or three ports for a three cell, four cell, or whatever have you, and you can uh, charge them accordingly. Depends on how many cells your LiPo battery has. But if you get just a standard NIM type, if you don't want to mess with LiPo, just get a smart charger. It'll essentially shut off or at least shut up to like 1% and trickle charge your battery to make it so you don't overcharge your batteries. Another thing you should never do is don't ever leave your battery on the charger unattended. If you if you sit there and you plug it in and you leave your house or you go into another room for a few hours and you forget about it or something goes wrong, you just burn down your house. Congratulations. Another thing is don't leave the battery charging past a full charge. Once it hits full, once the light turns green, once it turns off, whatever have you, take it off immediately. You do not want to keep charging past a full. You can cause it to explode. Another thing is don't leave the battery charging on any kind of carpet material or close to a lot of flammable objects. Uh, you can also buy charging bags or even do what I've done in the past, which is store it in like a metal box with some ventilation so it doesn't get too hot in there as it's charging. Also, do not fully charge your battery and leave it sitting around for a few days with a full charge. Only charge it when you know you're going to use it very, very soon. Now that we've skimmed over batteries, let's move on to something a bit easier to understand. BBs. To keep it simple, we're just going to talk about the BB weight. So most of the time what you're going to run into on any kind of standard shop or website is for is the BB weight you have 0 0.12, 0 0.20, 0 0.25, 0 0.28, 0 0.3, 0 0.34, and 0.36. Typically that's what you're going to run into, but they all have different uses. I know there are a lot of decimals in between those. I didn't call out every single one. There's like a 0.22 or like a 0.29. I don't know, but these are the main weights we're going to be talking about right now. And we're not going to go over everyone indi uh, individually. We're just going to generalize them. All guns have a sort of BB weight sweet spot that they can handle. For most AEGs, you want to stick to a standard minimum of 0.20 and a max of like 0.36. And that's only on the high DMR end of things. But just know that a heavier BB requires a more powerful gun. Which is why snipers can surprisingly use up to like a 0.8, which is ridiculous. Know that the industry standard is a 0.20. They're reliable, they're cheap, and they work in any gun type. You can throw 0.2s and CO2 pistols and a sniper rifle, cheap AEG, gas blowback AEG. You can put it in anything and it should work just fine. And the industry standard is to use 0.2 BBs to measure the basic FPS of a gun. Whenever you see them, whenever you see the FPS rating of a gun online, it was measured with 0.20 BBs. I want to say right off, unless your gun costs $30 or less, don't ever buy a 0.12 BB. They will break inside your gun and are useless. You can shatter these things. Usually the 0.12s you're gonna see are like the, the green ones, the orange ones, like the fun kid color ones. Those ones are for like the toy airsoft guns, the ones you will get at Walmart that really shouldn't even exist because they're terrible. But 0.12s are really meant for those. If you use that any, any high-end airsoft gun, you're gonna ruin your gun. 
You also have to keep in mind that your BB weight and quality will affect things like the range of your gun and its FPS, if only slightly. It all kind of depends. Um, also, one other thing to know is you can tell the quality of your BB by how much of a shine it has. If it's very shiny, you know that they've done multiple coats on it and the quality of the BB is good. It's not going to break on you. It's going fl to fly true and straight and it's going to hit hard. So check the shininess of your BBs too. Next, let's talk about hop-up adjustment. A lot of guns uh, come equipped to the mechanism, which will allow you to adjust the trajectory of your BBs. I hate that word, trajectory. Most AEGs, you can pull back the charging handle and reveal the adjustment gear on the inside. Simply spin a few clicks on the gear in either direction and give it a test fire, and then you can adjust accordingly. You just aim down your sight and just watch which direction your BB is going. If it just kind of whips straight up in the air, then you need to bring that hop up down. If it goes straight into the ground, you need to bring it up and find yourself a happy medium. You want your BB to travel straight and for as long as possible. This is especially important for snipers to get that BB because obviously you're sniping. You have one shot flying at them. At least with an AG, you can spray a few in there and the BBs are kind of random when they come out. Like they, they all follow different trajectory paths. So you're, you might hit them with one of those, but the sniper, you get one shot. You need to make sure it's on target. There are a lot of tricks on how to get the maximum range with your hop up, but it's mostly trial and error until you find a setting that kind of works for you, that kind of you adjust to your dot site or whatever it just make it work for you so just it's really not hard just turn that gear and adjust and just do some test fires now let's get into the final thing which is equipment the first thing i want you to invest in right now besides a gun is eye pro and by eye pro i mean eye protection you're gonna hear everybody refer to it as eye pro most goggles are fairly inexpensive, like 20 to $35, which isn't bad considering you're protecting your eyes. Think about it. Protect your eyes. Get good eye protection. There are a lot of different styles you can get from just basic shooting uh, glasses to mesh glasses to full seal. I highly, highly, highly recommend full seal goggles. They go all the way around your eyes. They cover the, the left and the right. They cover the sides under, above, and they fully flush to your face, and they are perfect. They protect your eyes from all angles, and you will never feel safer while using Yes, you can get paintball masks, which come with full face protection, but in my experience, they fog up way too much, especially in cold weather, and they restrict your ability to use optics. They're big and bulky. They get in the way. 99.9% .9 of airsoft players will absolutely refuse to play with you if you don't wear proper eye protection. Because guess what? If they shoot at you, you're blind. If they hit you in the eye, you will literally go blind if you get shot in the eye. So they don't want to be responsible for, the, for your dumbass who doesn't want to wear goggles. So just wear goggles or don't play. Everything else when it comes to equipment is entirely optional. But... I do want to point out two other things I think are basic necessities. I think highly that you should invest in a pair of boots that reach up to your shin, not just you know, right at the ankle. You want to go above the ankle, up into the shin area, because by far the number one most common airsoft injury is ankles. Running around in high stress situations in a potentially hazardous environment causes a lot of twisted or broken ankles. Not to mention you can just bash them into a rock, trip over a branch and rip up your leg or get caught on barbed wire if you're playing in private woods or something like that. Protect your ankles. You don't want anything to happen to those precious things. Well, guys, that's really it for this Airsoft 101 video. Hopefully you enjoyed. Let me know uh, really how you got into Airsoft. I want to know your stories. So thanks, guys, for watching. Leave a like, subscribe for more. Check out my videos, and I will see you in the next video. Later.